Good morning. It is Sunday, March 24th, 2024. I got maybe two hours of sleep last night. I was, I was having a lot of anxious, uncomfortable feelings last night after I posted my video of, um, should I, or will I go to the memorial today? Um, and I just want to really say thank you to everyone who left comments, including the two random Jehovah's Witnesses who seem to be watching my videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for, um, having the freedom to, I give you the freedom to leave your comments, um. Uh, and yeah, I did not sleep well at all last night. I don't know if it's because of the full moon. I don't really, I noticed that I don't sleep well on full moons. Maybe I'm part werewolf, but, uh, I, I, I drove to my little support group meeting this morning cause it's where I find peace and inspiration with people who have different belief systems and understandings of God than I do. And that's okay. And I'm grateful that I can just be at ease with people from all different backgrounds. And as I was driving to this meeting this morning, I was thinking about the word apostate. And really all it is, is a weapon watchtower organization created with, they knew exactly what they were doing and the intention and the power behind it and how they've weaponized a word, uh, very similar to how other groups use words, whether it be the word goyim or the N word, awful words out there, um, created by groups who think, or people who think they're exceptional we're better than, and we're going to call you this, which makes you other and therefore dehumanizing. Because if you can dehumanize another person with a label, then you don't feel anything when you hurt them, when you shun them, when you exclude them, when you walk right by them and treat them like they're dead, when you ignore them, when you don't acknowledge their pain, whether it be the, the funeral of a family member, what, whatever it is. And as I share this with you, I really want to make it clear that I am not hurt personally by that. Although it hurts me when I see others who are, that's the sign of being empathetic and the greatest empath who ever walked this earth was Jesus. He felt pain. He saw how a religion that had the law that was supposed to help these people be better actually made them feel they were exceptional and could hurt everybody else. And he came to liberate them from that. So that's my mini thought. I'm going to pause this and I'll meet back with you, I guess, later tonight. Um, I'm just going to take care of myself today. Lots of self-care, prayer, be in nature, take my dog to the dog park because he's nuts. And we'll see what happens later this evening. Be very well. Bye for now. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. It is March 24th, 2024. And if Someone had told me a couple months ago that I would be making a video about going to a Jehovah's Witness memorial in 2024. I would have said absolutely not. Or if you were one of my friends and you were telling me that you were going to the memorial this year, I probably would have tried to use every um, scriptural and self-help motivational tool and technique I knew to try to dissuade you for because I would care about you and, and I would tell you things like, don't go to a place where you're hated. Um, you know, all the things. And there's many, many comments similar in the video I made yesterday about should I go, but the, the hour has arrived. And as you can see, it is like a blizzard outside, uh, March 24th, 2024. And no, I don't think today is nice and 14. There's a synagogue just down the street from my house and, uh, the Jew, the Jewish community was not 
celebrating Passover this last weekend. And I know there's all the logistics of barley harvest, full moon, spring equinox. Like I used to have all of this memorized, but um, once again, today is not nice and 14th, but lunar calendar, solar calendars. Um, what I wanted to do in this introduction is just kind of let you know what this video will be. Um, and kind of, I feel like today is just a beautiful full circle moment where everything is connected. I started my journey out of Watchtower, hearing the call of Jesus to get out of her, my daughter, around 2016, but I still remained a, a Pimo because I wanted to plant seeds of grace in my local congregation. And what that looked like was me going to the meetings um, and while they were reading Watchtowers and Watchtower books, I would sit there and read my Bible. Then I worked up the courage to bring a non-New World Translation Bible to the Kingdom Hall. I started with the NIV just because it was so easy to read. Um, I have a variety of translations. And so I continued going to the Kingdom Hall up until 2019 when I was called into a judicial committee because in 2017, I got baptized in Lake Michigan by one of my return visits, who's a non-denominational Christian. And I, I personally felt um, motivated and inclined to have a true Christian baptism in Christ. Oh, and so, yeah, the full circle moment today, um, it's very personal, but it's also not personal. It's all about Jesus, even though it, it is essentially a black mass. And a lot of, of my Christian friends are like, why would you go to a building where they're all rejecting Jesus? And my answer to that was and still is, well, I rejected Jesus for so many years and God still was calling for me and he's calling for all of them too. He's calling for every person on this, on this beautiful earth, um, every day. And one of my friends today said, it's like, yeah, it's like we reject the, um, the plane ticket to get on like the most amazing adventure ever of an eternal lifetime. Um, but the good news is the ticket is reissued every day every hour, every minute, every moment, a person wakes up and accepts the invitation and realizes what Jesus did for every single one of us, whether we're, we're Jew, Gentile, and everything in between. So I will probably share my thoughts after the memorial. I'm just really trying to make this about Jesus and not me. I don't I do, I do feel a little anxious, but today was all about a lot of self-care. I didn't sleep well last night, so I woke up like really sleep deprived. And I talked about this in my little morning meditation. I took that video, um, right the spot where I got baptized. And then I went to a church service and it's not a, it's a church I've only been to one time before, but the time coincided because I needed to walk my dog and do other things during my day today. And... I was praying on my drive out to this church service, so I really hope they have communion today because I, I would love to actually do communion today with other believers. And sure enough, they had communion and they had a fill-in pastor. He was the retired pastor of their church. And I'll put the link below to the service that I went to. I thought it was really beautiful. It was it was emotional for me. Um, I, I didn't get love bombed. I just... People were normal, like they smiled, they'd, they said hello, but no one like converged on me like, oh, we've never seen this person before and we need to get her. Um, no. And yeah, God's mercies are amazing. And then I'll just close this whole video. Uh, if you know me at all, I do not sing in front of people, but like this song is so beautiful. And um yeah, enjoy the song at the very end of this video. It was taken from the service I went to this morning. So I'll see you later on in this video. I hope that y'all are having a great day. And and for those of us, probably the vast, vast, vast majority of people who watch my videos um, will not be going to Jehovah's Witness Memorial today. And so, um, you know, hallelujah that we all survived another memorial season of the Je Jehovah's Witnesses. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do, just like I didn't know what I was doing when I was one. All right. Talk to you later. 
Steve. pretty full so I guess I'll park on the street. That's okay. There it is. Okay. It is after the Jehovah's Witness memorial and I was like, you know how you feel when you have like an adrenaline pump and you want to shake out. So I drove over to my mom's house just to say hi. She had done her own memorial with her Christian friends where they all partake and support each other. Um, on Zoom. On Zoom. So we were just talking. But the reason why she's here is because y'all want her more than me. Everyone in the comments is like, we want to, we want your mother. So, um, no, tell some of your thoughts about going to the Kingdom Hall. So I walked in, um, and it was both the North and South congregation of my town. And so it was, it was packed and... It was that same, like, chitter-chatter. Like, they're very bubbly, talkative people. Like, I went to a church service this morning, and like I mentioned, I didn't get love bond, but they smiled at me. Yeah, so anyway, like, a lot of chatter. And right as I walked in, I saw my brother. Um, so I wanted to just give him the benefit of the doubt that he didn't shun me, but I don't know if he would have if he had had the choice, but he had a very full beard. Um... And I don't want to put meaning into people's faces because one of the things I did while I was there is I just really prayed to have a humble heart, to remember the words of Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, to remind myself that these people are under a deluding influence and to not get consumed with my own hurt or imputing wrong motives on everybody's facial expressions towards me. With that being said, I made my way to the front and I sat in the third row because there was some empty seats. And I smiled at everybody I walked past. There was quite a few heads that just like went down. I got a couple glares. Um, <laughs> and then the, the elders who were seated in the front row who passed the emblems. Um, one of them who had been on my um, kangaroo court committee in 2019 glared at me. But again, I don't want to. It felt like he wanted to kill me, but <laughs> I don't want to impute like wrong motives. Um, but also... Like, I do wear a cross necklace. The cross to me is beautiful because it's where heaven invaded earth. And the church service I went to this morning, he, the pastor made a quote from Archimedes, the mathematician. He said, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum and I will move the world. And then the pastor said, God's love is the fulcrum and um, the lever is... Jesus, I don't know, I don't remember, but like, I, yeah, like, just think of like that, God's full crumb, you can move anything with God's love, and that one elder who just gave me this look, he was kind of looking at me like, are you going to be a troublemaker, like, you better behave, um, and that's valid, because there have been Kingdom Hall crashes in, in the past few years, and I was not interested in doing that at all, but he was a hardcore Catholic, and then I guess started studying in what, the 70s, you know what I'm talking about? SK. SK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever I would go in service with him, he was very vocal about his hatred for Catholics. And when I was looking at, looking at him and just his anger towards me, it reminded me that his, his anger towards Catholicism is what fueled him to become the Jehovah's Witness he became. So I never want any anger I may still struggle with towards Watchtower to fuel me to persecute Jehovah's Witnesses or anybody else. Again, that comes to the whole concept of um, exceptionalism. We're exceptional and you're not us versus them. It's like, no. So that was a, a good reminder when my flesh inclination when he looked at me that way was to feel like victimized and better than or whatever. It's like, no, this is not about me. And whenever we do look at people like that, um, we're doing that to Jesus. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses would always use that scripture. Like when one of our brothers is persecuted, it's like poking God in the eye. Well, yeah, like use 
Use that when you're treating people that way. <coughs> okay, so I sat down and there was only one sister who must have really taken notes during the governing body update number two because she did the script perfectly. She said my name. She said, hi, Allie. It's nice you are here. And that was nice of her to say that. Um, but nobody else said hello to me. And that's okay. I wasn't expecting it. I still don't understand. Did our our family members say Yeah, because I said hi to him first. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's right there. I made those cartoons a long time oh, yeah, ago. back there. <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, I took some notes, mainly. Uh, mainly. Look because, at her notes, friends. <laughs> they're they're all over the place. I didn't bring a notebook, but um, it was interesting being there many years removed, and now being able to, I guess you could use the word appreciate how. Um, wickedly brilliant watchtower and thorough watchtower's ability to manipulate using the Bible is like they are really good at manipulation. And then if you add that to, yeah, um, it was a very slow talk, very boring. All the scriptures that we remember, like it was all, you know. And just the little piece, no consideration of context. And so the guy started the talk by saying, we're going to answer these four questions. Number one, how does Jesus' death open the way to everlasting life? Number two, who benefit? Number three, who should partake? Number four, what else can we do? And... Well, that's... A good, yeah, we got to know what else we can do. Um, so... I, they'll probably have like a memorial talk on jw.org, so I'm not going to go through all of this. But the part that was sad when I just found myself really praying was um, the who benefit part because they definitely went into the two hopes, heaven and earth. And if you've never watched the um, channel, The Bible Project, which has millions and millions of subscribers, not that numbers indicate anything is true or false, but the head pastor of that program, uh, Tim Mackey, who has, you know, PhD in biblical Hebrew and Greek, which again, you know, but that matters. Like he is, he's scholarly. We come from an organization that had no Bible scholars except Ray Franz. And that's, he got kicked out. Um, uh, his, he has a really good video series on heaven invading earth. And, and there are lots of Christians. Ooh, Tim Mackey. Yeah. There are lots of Christians who believe in a bodily, resurrection on earth um but because you you you've asked me that question a lot but where are you gonna go like i don't want to go to heaven you you would say that i want to be on yeah earth. my brother said that too today um and i always tell you the same thing it's not where it's with who you know so yeah they talked a lot about the two hopes and uh then the speaker said can we choose where we will serve regarding heaven and earth no and uh, really made it a point to um, let the crowd know that if you don't think you're called, do not partake, which leads to the question. Did he actually say that? Not in those words like do not partake, but it was so repetitive that unless you are born again and you have Holy Spirit and or you're just completely ignorant to Jehovah's Witness teachings... Who's going to partake in that kind of atmosphere, you know? A couple have tried because they just didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And they were... <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, uh, there was one other thing I was going to mention. One of the notes I put down. Oh, because they kept quoting, you know, Romans chapter 8, um, the special invitation to only partake. But it's so interesting. They'll use Romans 8 to apply counsel for what the other sheep... I feel like this is getting too... Blah, blah, blah. Too yeah. detailed. Yeah. Um, well, this is what I want to say. One of the notes I put is uh, what I felt when I was there is as they were droning on on this talk was the watchtower spirit is really like a demonic fire hose against the Holy Spirit. And I really felt that multiple times. Like the the speaker. Let me hear tell you what I just heard. I think you jumped from what they said to what you you heard them say that a fire hose. They didn't. I said that's what I felt. Good. Sitting okay. There. Sorry. That 
the talk felt like a watchtower demonic fire hose squelching Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to say? I did, but it fled my mind. <laughs> it fled. I mean, for example, this was a direct quote. How would God feel if someone part... Oh, because they use the same illustration every year, at least the years I used to go to the memorial, about the wedding feast and only the bridal party. But they don't even complete the illustration because when you go to a wedding, everybody gets to eat the food. <laughs> but only the bride and groom are getting married? I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. No, I heard it that this way. That illustration isn't good. I heard it this way, that if you go to a wedding... Do you think that you are the bride? No. You know who the bride is. Mm -hmm. She's marrying the man up there waiting for her to come down the aisle. Mm -hmm. Well, so the brother said, how would God feel if someone partook and they were not invited? If you're not anointed and you partake, you are displeasing Jehovah. That was a direct quote. Mm. And I was just like, that's so sad. And then... He asked the question, are we going to always do the memorial? So, and this was when I was like, mm, don't, don't say anything out loud, Allie. Control your facial expressions. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Because this is one of the questions, you know, created a lot of cognitive dissonance when I was first waking up. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26, um, which is the, the, the cherry-picked scripture answer to the question, how long are they going to keep doing the memorial? Which reminds me, when I was sitting in my seat waiting for the memorial to start, uh, there was a sister who I remember for many, many, many years. And I overheard her having a com conversation with someone. And she did, she said multiple times, I sure hope this is our last memorial. I hope the end's near. We need, we need Armageddon. And I was just like, yeah, so 7 billion people can be killed. And oh, and there was definitely the slideshow of big baskets of fruit, which... Kind of made me giggle. Paradise Earth. Mm -hmm. A lot of fruit. Okay, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. Um, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so I'm sitting there thinking, but Jesus came in 1914, according to Jehovah's Witnesses. So why y'all yes. still doing the memorial? That is perfect. I mean, Jesus... So again, it makes no sense. So what would happen if you asked a Jehovah's Witness that question? But Jesus came in 1914, so why are you still doing the memorial? So yeah, um, I'm just really grateful that I was able to walk into a kingdom hall and basically repattern for myself and my healing um, to have the last thing I ever do in a kingdom hall because I really don't need to go back um, for the last thing to be obeying Jesus' words to eat the bread and drink the wine because the last time I was in a kingdom hall, I was being stoned <laughs> and yeah. So my experience tonight uh, on Zoom meeting was with people that uh, I knew. There were a couple of new people there that I had not met before and I felt... Mostly I, extra host witnesses, correct? Mostly, yeah. I just felt loved and appreciated and um, I was glad that I decided not to go to the Kingdom Hall because I had gone a few weeks ago just to give some, uh, just to send a message to my son who was the speaker that I love him and that I still have an interest in what he does. I don't approve of everything he does, but it's his life. And uh, we are talking, so I'm grateful for that. And I guess I want to conclude this by one thing, because this is something my brother says about me to you a lot, that the only reason I do YouTube and um, he'll probably say, oh, she only came to the Kingdom Hall tonight to um, stand out to to be a spec, you know, for drama. He, he thinks I have a following. That's what he says, that mm -hmm. I have that I'm your cult leader. And then I have a following. And I would just like to emphatically declare that I do not have a following. I do not want a following. I want everyone to walk with Jesus on their own path. It's an adventure. And the Holy Spirit is your tour guide, not me. 
and and I mentioned that uh, you weren't reaching out for a following, but you have helped a lot of people, which we know from their comments, in even discussing topics that are non-religious. Yeah, that's what humans do. We we socialize and we talk, but and hopefully support and build up. But a lot of what they say is just projection. They don't even know they're doing it. Okay, well, thanks for listening to this ramble. That was our anticlimactic, my anticlimactic after the memorial thing. And then when I walked out, um, I made it a point to really make eye contact and smile at people. There was one sister behind me who, you know, tragically lost her grandson a couple years ago, and I just expressed my sympathy for that. And you could tell she was like, please stop talking to me, but like, that's so painful. And I'm just trying to be a human. And um, yeah, so I'm grateful today is over and today is not nice and 14th, but it doesn't matter. All right. She's excitable. <laughs> and I love her. <laughs> love you too, mom. Bye for now. Go to like a worship planning seminar and um, Actually, the guy that wrote this song was there and uh, talking about his music. It's Stuart Townen, uh, most famous for uh, um, Christ Alone. Um, but this was another song that he sang. Are we on? I think so. This is another song that uh, he sang that I love. I think you'll, I think you'll recognize it. It's not a old hymn, but uh, it has an old sound. And I want you to sing along as uh, as you uh, as you feel that uh, you're picking it up or know it already. How deep the Father's love for us! How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch his presence. How great the pain of sin The Father turned his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold the man Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers I was a sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in just his death and resurrection.